Hello and welcome to my employment law update for any student who is studying that particular subject in the academic year 2020-2021. As always with these things, if you are interested in purchasing the full course where we cover the whole range of subjects that could come up in any employment law module, then do be sure to check out the links in the description below for that. Hopefully it's of really good value to you. Anyway, enough about that, let's get started with this year's update. So I suppose in this year of all years, there is really probably only one place to start, and that is with coronavirus. Now, I'm not really going to go into any too much of the details of the coronavirus legislation as it relates to employment law, mainly because it's going to sort of consistently change, especially over the next coming months as we're working towards a vaccine. And some of these will obviously change depending on the economic situation of the nation as well. Throughout the last period, we've had looked at things like furloughs, and that looks like that's going to continue with a new government scheme. But there's also been layoffs and redundancies, so it's an area of employment law that has really come to the fore, unfortunately, over the past six or seven months. Various other things that have come up are working safely, and that is obviously going to be different for different people who are working in maybe customer-facing situations. For example, if you work in a cafe, that's obviously going to be very different from someone who is perhaps working from home. Now, there's other things as well, such as people not really being able to take holiday to go abroad during the summer. And so there's various issues that have also come up about when and when people can actually take their holiday. And that's something else that's sort of come up, especially in the context of NHS staff who have perhaps had to work overtime and maybe haven't been able to take that holiday in the same way. Other issues that maybe have come up in employment law situations are disciplinary procedures. Much of that's going to be taking place over Zoom and other sort of forms of social contact. So that's definitely something else to look out for. And something where there isn't maybe a legislation element, but definitely something that we still need to be aware of, is people's mental health as they're working from home or they're working in higher pressure environments because of coronavirus. It's something that employers are going to have to be aware of and something that might come through the courts in future months and years. In terms of actual legislation that we can really talk about in detail, the Parental Bereavement Leave and Pay Act 2018 came into force earlier on this year in 2020, and basically offers two weeks paid leave for parents if their child of under 18 dies, or if they have a stillbirth after the 24-week mark of any given pregnancy. Another change has been in relation to a written statement, and this comes down to the difference between workers and employees. Previously, there was a distinction between the two, but now workers have the same rights as employees to have a written statement of employment particulars. And so this is details about the job, such as the hours and days that a worker is required to work, the entitlements to paid leave, other types of entitlements as well, as well as if there is a probation period, and what training it the employer provides. Then also this year we've had the ending of the so-called Swedish derogation um, and this basically means that agency workers are now going to be entitled to the same pay as their permanent counterparts after the 12 week mark. Previously that wasn't the case but that's obviously changed now. There's also been change thanks to the Employment Rights Miscellaneous Amendments Regulations 2019, and this basically establishes a lower threshold requirement for employees to request an information and consultation agreement. This is actually potentially very relevant in the context of coronavirus. The information and consultation agreement often relates to if a business is in particular trouble and in what situations the um, owners of the business would then have to consult and inform the employees about exactly what is going on. Previously, the requirement was that it had to be 10% of employees, but now that's dropped right down to 2%. Another thing that if you are an employment law student, you should always be aware of, and these are not necessarily going to be the latest figures, even in my employment law course, which is available in the description below, is that the monetary figures change each year in accordance with things like inflation and where the economy is. It's a decision that's made by the government and ch tends to change every 12 months around the April mark. So do make sure to check out the latest figures for things like redundancy pay and just be aware of that figure changing. 
Um, there's also been a lot of case law this year and again I'm not going to go into too much detail about this mainly because there are podcast episodes that cover these particular subjects so if you are interested in following up on this then do go and check out the links below. Um, the first case is Gillam and Ministry of Justice from the end of last year. This looks at the employment status of judges um, and we've also got a couple of vicarious liability cases which have really affected the law in this area. So the first of those is Morrison's and various claimants and the second one that followed shortly afterwards was Barclays Bank and various claimants as well. Both changing the law in significant ways of vicarious liability and when that will apply to employers. And there we have this year's employment law update. I hope you did find it useful. I think that if you are a student who is studying employment law, then don't worry about getting bogged down in too many of the details about some of those updates. Really, this is just sort of for those students who are perhaps writing a particular piece of coursework on a subject, or they think that this is likely to come up in an exam. And it's obviously going to look really impressive if you can talk about something that has happened only very recently, a new legal update where there perhaps isn't the same level of journal articles or even news stories on this particular subject yet. I'll be back with another update soon, but for now, bye!